Biocontrol is an important tool for greenhouse and nursery use. A number of commercial firms are using this strategy to successfully control insects, such as perennial plug producer North Creek Nurseries, shown here in Landenburg, Pennsylvania. Creek Hill Nursery in Leola, Pennsylvania also uses this method of insect control successfully. Botanic Gardens and Arboreta can implement biocontrol where collections of plants are permanent to semi-permanent. At the Penn State Flower Trials, aspects of biocontrol are used both in the greenhouse and field production of the flowers being tested each season. I'm here with Laura Buck at Creek Hill Nursery in Leola, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to ask Laura a couple questions about the biocontrol strategy they're using here at Creek Hill. Laura, how long have you been involved in biocontrol here? A little over five years. <laughs> and uh, how effective is the biocontrol strategy you're implementing? Um, it's been it's it's been pretty effective, um, especially with the uh, spider mites. I I haven't seen yet a chemical that works just as well as Percy. Percy does an excellent job with uh, two spot spider mites. Get rid of egg all stages. By that, they fight of Silesia are similar. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, how important would it be for a grower who's getting into biocontrol to be working very closely with their suppliers of beneficial insects and predators? Yeah, well, it's very important because there are certain um, instances where you need extra advice and input about certain outbreaks, and they give you great advice on, on what to implement as far as uh, when to use a soft chemical for applying like insects, um, the predator insects. Thank you. What would you tell a grower who's thinking about getting into biocontrol and has not been doing this in the past? Well, the most important thing is to implement a scouting program at least once a week, uh, switch over to soft chemicals, start with one house and see how that goes, um, and get with a, a supplier or a consultant, a good bio consultant. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank Appreciate you. Your time. All right. Aphids are one of the first insects we typically see in spring. Over 4,000 species are known, and about 250 are serious pests of agricultural, forestry, and horticultural crops. Aphids can multiply rapidly, and two aphids on a plant or crop on Monday can multiply to 100 by Friday of the same week. These sucking insects are vectors of many plant virus diseases. Aphis nerii is a specialist and will only attack milkweed and oleander, unlike potato aphid. Green peach aphid, or Mises persicae, is another generalist and will attack a wide range of plant species. As they grow in population numbers, winged adults will form and move to other plant species. Macrocyphonella sanborni, or the chrysanthemum aphid, is a very specialized aphid and will only attack chrysanthemum. Prompt aphid control is an important aspect of good horticultural practices. A number of good generalist predators are available commercially, like ladybird beetles. Not only do they attack aphids, but they will attack other problem insects like mealybugs. This picture shows a large number of ladybird beetles found in the United States. This collection is part of the USDA ladybird species collection. One ladybird beetle can consume 5,000 aphids in its lifespan. Larvae are particularly effective as predators as in the ladybird species. Green lacewings are also a useful predator of the generalist type as they eat many insects. They can consume scale, spider mites, mealybugs, and others. This is an adult lacewing, but the larval stage is very effective in controlling many species of insects. Usually they have large wings with lacy markings. Generally, they do not reproduce in greenhouses. Ephidolides is a delicate midge that lays 100 to 200 eggs per female, and the larvae will kill about 4 to 65 aphids. Aphylinus is about 3 30 seconds of an inch long and is best used preventatively and can be applied with aphidius. Aphidius colmani and ervi are used commercially and are less than one-eighth of an inch long 
and not affected by day length controlling cotton aphid, green peach aphid, tobacco aphid, and bird cherry oat aphid. The larger aphids are controlled by Aphidius colt ervi. This is an aphid mummy, which is the result of an ervi or colmani attack. As you can see, the parasitization right here, then the larvae will chew their way out of the backside of the aphid. Surfid flies are wonderful beneficials that actually will work their way into the greenhouse. The adults feed on nectar, but the maggots, or larvae, feed on aphids. They are very effective in cleaning up an infestation of aphids in many types of plants. Scouting is very important as an aspect of a sound biological control strategy, and successful implementation is necessary to scout on a weekly basis to determine changes in insect populations. Laura, would you mind telling us a bit about your uh, procedures that you use here at Creek Hill? We scout once a week. It's very important to scout and catch your um, pest early because uh, many of the biologicals are, are very effective at the first, second, and third instar stage. Also, when you're scouting, you're not only going to look for pests, but you're going to look at the ratio between pests and predators. At times, you'll find your, your predators outnumber your pests and you just leave things alone. Other times, your pest might, might climb a little higher, so you use and experience the use of the softer chemicals and how they work. What tools do you use for scouting? We use hand lenses. There are different kinds. There's this one. And this one as well. And you also have the capacity for a higher resolution inspection using a microscope. Yes, is that right? we just acquired a microscope and now we have that available to us to look. With your, with your scouting reports, uh, these are filed and so you have access to go back and look at the records that have been collected over the course of time and that enables you to make decisions on hot spots in the greenhouse or other aspects. How long do you keep your records for? Um, a year. Okay. And we store the rest away. <coughs> There you go. This is what the scouting report looks like. Blank, obviously it's not filled in at this point, but <clears throat> in going through the greenhouses and checking the pests, checking the beneficial insects and recording numbers, this enables a track record uh, to be available for nursery management and greenhouse right. management. Right, we have numbers one through four, four being the highest pressure, one being the least. And then if we have a side column to note in the comments, how many predators we see if we see them, and uh, what the ratio is, so we can make a decision from there. Thank you very much, Laura. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Two-spotted spider mite typically feeds on the lower leaf surfaces, and chemical resistance makes this a prime target for biological control. Phytosilesius persimilis is a predatory mite and one of the effective biocontrol strategies. Phytosilesius moves rapidly, as you can see, seeking out two spotted spider mites in the foliar canopy of the plant. This is a very common successful control, giving a quick knockdown of spider mites. Phytosilesius persimilis will consume 20 spider mites per day typically and does a very good job of cleaning up a crop or foliar canopy. To deploy these mites is a simple matter, shaking them out over the crop to be treated. Another way to get them into the canopy is to use a sachet for vertical systems or hanging baskets. When you have this much flowering material in a greenhouse, likely you will find thrips. Thrips such as western flower thrips not only transmit virus diseases, but they also damage flowers and foliage of many plant species. Again, chemical resistance has been shown with thrips and biological control can be a very good alternative strategy. Typically, thrips feed on nectar and pollen as well as flower petals and foliage. They are transported on the wind and can move about geographically. While there are many choices for biocontrol, one effective control is the minute pirate bug. Aureus can survive on nectar and pollen in the absence of thrips. Poinsettias, a long-term greenhouse crop, are often beleaguered with white flies in the later part of the production cycle. 
Greenhouse whiteflies have also shown chemical resistance and biocontrol has proven to work well. Delphastus is an excellent consumer of whitefly. Rove beetles are useful in the cleanup of undesirable insects in potting media, consuming a wide range of species. Fungus gnats are a particular problem in young plants, seedlings, and cuttings. Larvae chew on the root systems of young plants and adults are distinguishable by a Y-shaped vein pattern in the wing. Fortunately, these are easily controlled using beneficial nematodes. Steiner nema may be applied through the hose injector system or with a watering can. Simply dissolve the material in the water and apply through the hose and injector. For good biological control programs, scouting and record keeping are paramount. Work closely with your BCA suppliers, adjust the chemical use to fit your biocontrol strategy, and preserve and conserve the naturally occurring BCAs in your environment. We hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you.